Hey, you made it. It's so great to see you. My name is Mojack Logo, and this is a billion ways to catch coronavirus this festive season. And today, we're going to talk about New Year's tradition. Hooray! But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe to make sure you get all the hot, roasty takes on topics you care most about. Like making sure 2020 fucks right off. Bye! Hey, hey! This is the year when the universe decided that severe psychological distress is a dish best served daily. Zoom meetings, do that the whole year. Stay at home and watch the same bullshit TV shows. Give us more, 2020. Give us more. This year has proven to be as much fun as a star on top of a Christmas tree, when the Christmas tree itself is in a smoldering heap of trash. I can smell it from here. From burning kangaroos to exploding ports and mass civil unrest all over the world, 2020 felt like getting hit in the face with a water balloon while you're hanging out in the North Pole in lockdown. North Pole in lockdown. Ah, what guys? So given all this trauma, you might be asking yourselves, how could we possibly move on to the next year? Unacceptable. Well, you might be in luck because today we're going to look at coping mechanisms from around the globe. We're going to examine how people wrap up the madness of the previous year and fall into the terrifying unknown abyss that is the next one. <laughs> Scary sounds. Yes. For most people, the coming of the new year is always a way to draw a line in the sand. A way to say, that's it. We're starting over. The old me has given up. He's dead and he has to be reborn. Hopefully like a phoenix though, and not like a white walker on dick. Those white walkers were so hectic in Game of Thrones. You saw. Do you guys have dragon glass? Have you seen it? They sell it at Mr. Price home. But it's out of your budget, so just move on. Of course, the type of death we're talking about here is purely symbolic, as are the following traditions. Because the other way to describe them would be to say that they're mental, wild, strange, totally fucked. But let's have a look at our own backyard first. Uh -huh. In South Africa, there are two mass migrations during this time. One to the beaches of KwaZulu-Natal and the other to the beaches of the Eastern Cape. Many South Africans see this as the only time in the year when they can dip their toesies on the cool sandy shore. Uh -huh. Problem is, they're all going to the same two beaches, North Beach. Pack, pack. In fact, just go to a water park. You should see it. It looks like everyone's at a packed nightclub. And this year, we definitely can't afford another bumper to bumper situation along our coastlines. I can practically hear COVID 19. Ah, uh, look at these fools. There we go. Mortality rate is going up. Stay the fuck at home. Please, swim in the bathtub. Just skip one year, please. Now in Finland, tradition dictates that melting a horseshoe for luck, then tossing it into a bucket of water where it rehardens into a warp shape predicts your fortune for the upcoming year. Bubbles, great money on the horizon. Tin breaks up in the water. Ah, oh, yikes, that's not good. A winged rodent, bat times ahead. Rodent, bat, wings. This would be a lot more funnier if we didn't get COVID. From bats. Also, many cultures have adopted the European tradition of kissing someone at the stroke of midnight. I, for one, won't be doing that this year for obvious reasons. In fact, this year I plan to elbow the shit out of someone. What up, we? Hey, what's happening, player? Long time. Oh, yeah. You like that, don't you? When I touch your humoroidal joint. Mm. Oh, you like it when I speak biology? I know the bones and the arm. These are phalanges, bitches. In Colombia, residents carry empty suitcases around the block in the hope of a year that's going to be filled with travel. Guys, just book a ticket instead. Very ambitious. Because nothing says, Papi, I'm going places quite like running in circles for an extended period of time. It's very strange, this Colombian tradition. Very strange. In Greece, parents hang an onion on the front door of every house for New Year's Eve, signifying rebirth. The next day, they wake their children up by tapping them on their heads with that same stinky onion. First of all, I don't know how an onion symbolizes rebirth. Maybe if it made you teary, it would be about shedding light on the previous year. This is fucking weird. I mean, could there be a better way to start the year than to wake up full of tears? Judging by the current unemployment rate in Greece, at least this tradition makes some sense. They're so broken, Greece, they are slamming paper plates. 
Whoppa! Just pick it up, we can reuse this. Whoppa! Why not use a kiwi instead? It's got a nice hairy exterior, so at least it won't feel too unfamiliar to the Greek touch. Moving up north, in Denmark, people stand on their chairs and leap into January at midnight to banish bad spirits from their house. Amateurs, you just jump off a chair. No burning sage, no throwing of salt, no holy water, no exorcisms. Where is the drama? Come to Africa. We'll show you how to banish evil spirits. You must ban impair poor. In fact, Denmark, you know what we do here? We slaughter, we, we slaughter a Danish, the confectioner. We're like, look at this apple pastry. Ah. Imagine it was that easy. I'd be rich right now. In Russia, however, everyone writes down a special wish for the next year, burns the paper they wrote it on, and dumps the ashes into a glass of champagne. And they down it just before midnight. Bonang would be so proud, your girl be so sophisticated. I don't know about you, but it sounds to me like everyone wished for food poisoning and perhaps a new president, which is probably also why you have to burn it afterwards. In parts of Italy, such as Naples, the motto is out with the old. They take it literally, which means that on New Year's Eve, old unwanted furniture is thrown out. Literally, guys, they just toss it out of the balconies. Oddly enough, the custom is also practiced here in South Africa, where it seems nobody can stand to have a laundry machine or a fridge for over a year. Some of those are still under warranty. Oh, what guys, give it to your grandmother. Another fridge bites the dust. May they be reunited with toasters. We're gonna miss you, laundry machine. In Joshua Dawes' name, amen. In 1895, the small city of Guayaquil in Ecuador was hit hard by the yellow fever epidemic, with many people dying and the survivors asking themselves one question. With our loved ones dead, what are we gonna do with all these clothes? So during that year, people packed a bunch of coffins with clothes of the dead and set them on fire. What? As a big fuck no to the idea of owning extra clothes. Don't tell Bona. Ever since then, the streets of Ecuador have become a wet dream for every pyromaniac across the world, with the families burning gigantic dolls representing spirits as evil as the Joker and of course the fan favorite whichever president is currently running that country. Ah, effigies burning over here. I don't think we could do that in South Africa. Now where they're lighting up an effigy of Jacob. I mean really. And thus, the largest fire hazard known to man was born. If you want extra points, the thing to do is jump over the flames 12 times for each month of the year. Although in that case, you and your fabulous pubic hair risk becoming a part of the spectacle. Guys, if you want your pubis to be on fire, just get a STD. Crabs, am I right? I'm not. Please don't get crabs. Regardless of whether 2020 was a good or a bad year for you, okay, let me phrase that. Ah! Regardless of whether 2020 was a terrible or a fucking terrible year, now is the time for you to put all of this behind us. What's truly important is the fact that you're not alone in the crazy mess that is 2020. And you're not gonna be alone in 2021. We are going to be there for each other. Unless you die and perish painfully. What I'm trying to tell you is that you're basically on your own again, guys. Hmm? And I'll see you on the other side, fam. Uh, here's some sage. Just leave me alone. Ah! We didn't get a chance to go through every global tradition in this episode. So, if you've missed one that you are particularly in love with, let us know in the comments below. And if you could invent your own New Year's tradition, what would it be? Let me know in the comments. Over here. We won't, we won't. Hey, peeps, did you like what you saw? If you did, click here or here for more and don't forget to subscribe.